So this is the second part of our mission to find the epicenter of earthquakes. And what I have here are three seismograms for three different cities. We have a seismogram for Chicago, one for Tampa, and one for Wink. And what these seismograms are telling us is the arrival time of P waves and S waves. So I've already gone through and uh, drawn lines down from where the P waves and the S waves start in order to get a P wave and S wave arrival time. So if we break down these scales right here, we have some numbers to kind of go by to help us out here. We have 230 right here and 235 here. So we can figure out that these longer marks in between are the whole minutes. And then we have these shorter tick marks in between here. And if we count those, we see that those are going up by 10 seconds each. So that I've gone through and gotten all the times of the P wave and the S wave arrival times for Chicago, Tampa, and Wink. So I went ahead and filled out the chart up here with all those arrival times for Chicago, Tampa, and Wink. And I have gone through and gotten the difference in arrival time, the distance to the epicenter, and the P wave travel time. If you are kind of hazy or forgot how to do some of these steps, please refer back to the last video and I kind of walk through how to do that. So the goal now is to get the time of origin. The time of origin is really when the earthquake actually happens. So we're going to use some of the information in this table to determine what time the earthquake actually happened. And we're going to do that by taking the P wave travel time and comparing it to the P wave arrival time. So here's what's going on. It took the P wave three minutes to get to Chicago. It took the P wave five minutes, 10 seconds to get to Tampa and two minutes, 10 seconds to get to Wink. So we know how long it took these P waves to arrive at these three cities. And we know what time it got to those cities by looking at the P wave arrival time. So I kind of think about it like this. If I were to say, I'm going to go over to uh, a friend's house and I arrive at that friend's house at 530 and it took me five minutes to travel there, then that would mean that I left my house at 525. So it's the same thing with P waves and uh, their travel time and their arrival time. If the P wave traveled for three minutes and arrived at the station at 233, then it must have left or the earthquake must have happened at 2.30. So if that's correct, then these should all be the same because the earthquake happened at the same time. It's just that it took uh, different amounts of time for the P wave to arrive at different cities because they're different distances apart. So let's just check and see if this is accurate. Uh, the P wave for Tampa, Florida took five minutes, 10 seconds, to get to the station in Tampa. It got to the station in Tampa at 2.35.10 in, uh, in the morning in this case. So I'm going to subtract uh, from 2.35, I'm gonna subtract 5.10 and figure out that again, we get a time of 2.30. So that's good. It should be the same amount of time because, or it should be the same time of origin because the earthquake happened at the same time. So let's take a look and see if this is true. The, for Wink, it took the P wave two minutes, 10 seconds to travel there. It got to the station in Wink at 2.32.10. And we can see by some easy math that that is spot on with what we want. 2.30.00. Now, sometimes these will be off by maybe 10 or 20 seconds. That's okay. It's usually a result of maybe not reading uh, the seismograms correctly or the seismograms are, are kind of hard to read or when you're transferring those those P wave and S wave arrival times over to your reference table to try to find the distance. Sometimes you might get a little bit of a different distance. Uh, as I mentioned in class, uh, you can get about a 200 uh, kilometer uh, range there come to that, that wiggle room so that if you get, for instance, in Chicago, 1600 instead of 1400, that's going to throw your time off a little bit. They should be all around the same time if they're not exactly the same time. Uh, the closer they are together, the better. If one of them is wildly off, you know that you did something wrong over here. 
So that's it for this video. My next one, I'm going to show you how to uh, take these locations and find the epicenter of an earthquake.